is uh, Stephen Mailer, who's an expert, uh, world expert on uh, crystal skulls, and um, he's traveled to Egypt for, I think, 20 years and has studied the oral traditions of the people, and his insights are amazing because, um, he, you know, the people he's been in contact with are the spiritual carriers of the ancient Egyptian knowledge, which has always been secret, um, you know, for thousands of years, but now it's coming to the surface because now is the time when it's imperative that it's, spo it's spoken of and shared. And so he's an amazing ac uh, access point for me, for other people as well. I think it's, 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 uh, it's, it's profound to me as a, as a spectator, as someone on the outside, to see how things have developed. Uh, because I followed uh, Stephen Miller when he was uh, doing these minor lectures on uh, chemistry and uh, uh, his own theories oh, good. about uh, ancient Kemet. And I remember following some of the really early documentaries of uh, uh, Hancock uh, and Boval. And it's just what I have noticed now, and this is why this time is just so amazing to me, is that it used to be so uh, locked away and it was very difficult to get access to these things. And, and you guys, you didn't actually have much connection uh, between each other. It was like you would only meet each other if you maybe collaborated on a documentary, maybe sponsored by National Geographic or Discovery Channel or whatever. But now I'm seeing more and more of you people connecting and working together across fields. It's as if you're having this nice party and you have almost invited everyone. Well, that's yeah. That's what's wonderful. We're, what we're working on right now is a new series called um, "Ancient Tomorrow," which um, is hopefully going to film in January and February. And I, I was contacted by uh, one of the uh, main people from uh, from that, uh, Ramon uh, Gavoya, and he, um, you know, he he's been watching what I do, and he said, "Well, I'd really like you to be someone that we work with in Peru." Um, and then uh, I, you know, I said, "That's great." Um, and then he said, um, "Do you know Steve, uh, Stephen Mailer?" And I said, "No." And so he gave me Stephen's Skype um, uh, Skype uh, address, and so I just contacted Stephen, and he said, "Oh, Brian, there you are. Okay, now let's start talking." And and uh, you know, Stephen's great because he's told me he said, "Anytime you want to talk to me, phone me." <laughs> and we have amazing conversations, and and so Stephen. Um, you know, Stephen um, is to do the, um, basically what this series is going to be is the connections, ancient connections possibly between Peru and Egypt, or not that they were necessarily connected physically, but just the you know, very high technology of some kind was used by both cultures several thousand years ago. And so Stephen was going to do Egypt, and I was going to do Peru, and then as we as the whole thing has started to um, organically evolve, um, Stephen has been talking to the um, the producers, and he said, you know, he said Brian has to come to Egypt because I want him to look at these, you know, at these things, and and Chris Dunn has to be there, and we have to film everything, our conversations, and then Chris has to go to Puma Punku with Brian and me, and. You know, it's like, wow, you know, I, I really hope that's going to happen because that would be so much fun to be with, you know, to be with these uh, these two men and, and others, hopefully, uh, David Childress, possibly, um, in both both countries and all, all of our heads looking at it at the same time saying, well, what do you think that stone is? It's like, you know, you're, you're I, making, I would come. You're making the discoveries and, this, and the whole science of it. You're making it a spectator sport. You're, you're really making this... Uh, engaging for everyone that's trying to follow you um, and, and what I would just hope is that um, not just doing these big productions but maybe doing like this with some of your dialogues um, when it's possible because I'm pretty sure that that watching someone like yourself and, and Stephen Wheeler or Christopher Dunn having conversation and discussing these things even from day to day as things progress, would be extremely inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, I'm comparing this to my own uh, research um, into people like Terence McKenna. One of the, some of the best uh -huh. things that he's, he's ever done was when he was doing the dialogue with um, 
in uh, in Prague um, about alchemy, and 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 he also did one with Rupert Sheldrake, um, where they were talking about um, entheogens and uh, morphic fields and and all these topics that they are researching. But it's it's the dialogue between different minds with the same passions and focus. It's it's way more inspiring mm -hmm. than than sitting through a, a National Geographic documentary where someone is trying to create or composite some sort of narrative. When, it, when things flow, it's just you feel like you're actually in the room with them and you follow the train of thought. It, it becomes mm -hmm. so much more alive and uh, that was just a suggestion. It's just, as I was saying, I, I followed so many of, of you people and, and being able to now sit here and engage with you from the other side of the globe that's just kind of proving the point that things are really getting connected and I have no idea where mm -hmm. the science is going to take us tomorrow because when people know that you are making yourself available and they are able to write you or give you suggestions or join the groups on Facebook and things like that, you're going to get so many offers of uh, assistance and help and creating uh, animations or uh, artwork or uh, researching specific scientific phenomenon as I was pointing out to you I mm -hmm. would really like some uh, sound specialists to at least guide you people when you do this research there's so many experts in this and I sent you a few um, things about cymatics and some of the they're really artists at the moment but they're slowly getting into science it's just I, I everything is just kind of growing together into something new that we haven't seen before well it's yeah it's wonderful and um, you know from what you're just saying um, I'm just reflecting on I was in the I'm you know I'm in Lima now so I'm sorry for all the noise but that's you know that Lima is just you know 10 million people of chaos but uh, a few days ago when I was in Paracas where the little museum is this lady walked in the door from uh, who's from England and it, it turns out that she um, she was a policewoman but she was involved in forensics and so she was looking at the skulls and I said well as a forensic police person what would you say and you know i got amazing information from her for you know for free because she she would say well that you know this one has a crack in the back of the skull that, that would not have been a physical blow be and then she described what you know what would have been involved and then she was able to teach me in two minutes how to tell the difference between a male and a female skull based on the you know the brow ridge of a of a male projects out more um, a male skull has more of a oval or square eye, eye socket, whereas a female's is, is more round. You know, just the, this is someone who walks in off the street, and it's like, so it's uh, like I say, it's almost a daily occurrence with different different pieces of the puzzle coming in. Um, and I, what you say is, is wonderful because that's uh, that is um, probably for a lot of people. The most interesting thing is is to get little you know little pieces of information along the path rather than waiting for a year or two years for the National Geographic special to come out. And by the time that happens, the information's kind of you know even a year is kind of old now. Um, I think that's going to be so. relevant uh, a lot in the future. That that it's not about uh, you can't keep up unless you're in it with your own activity. Um, I think that's really the problem with uh, now I keep getting back to academics um, I think that's going to be a problem mm -hmm. for academia if they do not start working the way that, that you do um, they, they will be kind of left behind of course they will have this huge treasury of knowledge that's still going to be of value but as an authority they will lose a lot of ground if they don't start coming out and collaborating with people like a policewoman or uh, a local uh, guy mm -hmm. with a metal detector or people that are just on holiday and notices something that they hadn't seen before. 